everyone, welcome back to some more Everlasting Summer. So, yeah, last we left off, uh, I saw Yolana and Alyssa naked. That's pretty much the entire episode. So, moving right on. Can we? She smiled nicely. Huh? Yeah, sure. I stood up and pulled out a chair for her. Please. I was in an excellent mood at the moment. Enjoy your meal. Saying that, Lena began staring at me and continued for some time, but then, after realizing how odd she looked, she switched to her plate. You too. Do you have any plans for today, Simon? Nope. I gave her an honest answer, as indeed I had no plans. Except for searching for answers, but that was more like a global goal. Do you want to take a boat ride to the island with us? The island? Well, I think I've seen it from the pier. For what? Olga Dimitrivana asked us to gather some strawberries. Ooh, strawberries. There are a lot of strawberries there, and they're so delicious. I love strawberries. I could imagine the taste without even eating it, just by looking at Slavia's face. And what are those for? I don't know, but it's indeed a great idea. Well, indeed it is. Moreover, I haven't been to the island yet. Yeah, sure. Within minutes, we were already standing at the pier. Well, here is the boat. Hang on, I'll go fetch the paddles now. I was left face to face with Lena. Do you like strawberries? Well, not really, but they're tasty. Lena smiled. I see. I didn't know what to say next, how to continue the conversation. If Slavia didn't come back, we could probably sit here till the evening without saying a word. Here you go. She handed me a pair of hefty paddles. Yeah, thanks. We got into the boat. I untied it and pushed off the shore and tried to start paddling. And where exactly are we heading to? Right there! She pointed her finger at the island. That island is named the closest one. Really? I wonder what captain gave it such an original name. Well, the island is indeed close to the shore. Aye aye, captain. If only I'd known what was waiting for me ahead. I wasn't an experienced oarsman. I'd rowed a boat just once or twice in my entire life. It was less than half a mile to the island, but we were making our way in zigzags thanks to my skills. By approximately the middle of the trip, my arms hurt so badly that I dropped the paddles to get some rest. Well, aren't there any strawberries anywhere else? I mean, in more accessible places? But the tastiest ones grow there. Slavia gave me a puzzled look. Is it hard for you to row alone? Lena, unlike Slavia, understood everything straight away. Oh, it's nothing. Anyway, I couldn't let a fragile girl help me. Sexist. The rest of the way, I spent concentrating on staying alive while getting to the island. Slavia and Lena discussed something, but I wasn't listening. That was too much for me. At last, we arrived. Completely exhausted, I got out on the shore and looked at the boathouse. It seemed so far away that I felt like a first person on the moon watching the earth rise. Here you go! Slavia handed me a basket. It was a small island, barely a hundred meters long. It looked like a, bri a birch grove. Oh, birch grove. With even rows of trees covering its entire surface. A calm green sea spread beneath our feet, with wind causing lonely waves on its surface from time to time. This island looked like a lost paradise. It's no wonder that the most delicious strawberries grow just here. We've got to split up. That way we'll do the job faster. Yeah, sure. But there are only two baskets, said Lena humbly. Oh, you're right. 
my bad. So how are we going to split it up? Split up then? Oh goodness, Lena or Slavia, Lena or Slavia. Well, we already had a uh, romantic evening with Lena. So how about we have a romantic afternoon with Slavia? I didn't want to walk here alone and hope that Slavia would join me, but I couldn't bring myself to ask. Well, it's obvious. One basket for me, one for you two. Screw you, Simon. I made a choice and you just told me to piss off. No, let me go with you. Slavia smiled. Thank you, Slavia, for reading my mind. Okay. I was a bit surprised, but I was also glad that it had turned out like this. Lena seemed to take no offense at all. The reaping has commenced. The strawberries were delicious here indeed. I could probably eat them all if I didn't stop myself in time. Despite being wild grown, the berries were close to the garden to the garden ones in size and had rich red color, so it was clear that our visit here wasn't in vain. Slavia was walking right beside me as we held the the as we had only one basket. I felt like a mushroom picker, looking under every shrub and searching through the grass carefully. Pay attention! An entire bunch of strawberries had been left behind. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. It's fine. You must enjoy being here, don't you? You like nature, after all? Of course I do! Slavia smiled. It reminds me of my home. We have similar beautiful birches there. She gazed dreamily somewhere into the distance. Look, I've always wanted to ask, what do you like in general? You look so busy 24-7 and it seems like you have no time to rest at all. Um, she started to blink, think. I don't know, really. Doing a variety of, of, activity, of activities is enjoyable for me. Well, that's understandable, but still... I like knitting and sewing. Things like that. Slavia took a handkerchief out from her pocket. There were red, yellow, and green flowers embroidered on it. They were entangled with each other in a complicated way, creating sophisticated geometric forms. Such a typical Russian handmade handkerchief. Glimpsing it, glimpsing it, I instantly imagined Sylvia dressed in an ancient seraphim, sitting on a bench beside a ramshackle house with a crow of crowd of playing children running around. I can't read today. It's quite cute. Thanks. Let me give it to you as a gift. Such a personal em proposal embarrassed me. You can tell my migraine is a thing today because me with words equals oh my god bad. Sorry. You shouldn't. No, take it. I looked at the handkerchief once again and put it into my pocket. Thank you. There were so many strawberries here that after a mere half an hour, we had the basket filled up to the brim. It seems we're done. Yes. We've got a lot, so it should surely be enough. When we got back to the boat, Lena wasn't there yet. She'd need more time to fill the basket by herself. Yeah, I guess so. I looked at the river. Sun sparkles happily dancing across the water surface were the only thing that distinguished it from a mirror. That's how calm the river seemed. What are you thinking about? Nothing, really. And you? Me? What will happen once vacation is over? We'll have to leave this camp and go back to our homes. Will I ever see anyone I met here again? Will I ever see you again? She looked at me with her eyes so full of sorrow that I couldn't think of what to say. Lena came out of nowhere, breaking the silence. Oh, you're done already. Here. She showed us a basket full of strawberries. Great. Now we can go back. And I still had Slavia's face and those words of hers on my mind. Sadness and sorrow weren't the kinds of emotions typical of her. Could she be hiding them all the time under a mask of cheerfulness? I had no answer to this question, and I knew I couldn't find one either. 
either way. Maybe later. The way back took less time as I tried to concentrate on rowing and ignoring everything else. My only wish was to get back alive at the first, as the first trip hadn't gone without consequences and now my hands started to hurt after only a few sweeps of the oars. Having tied up the boat, I fell to the ground with no energy left. Slavia and Lena leaned over me. You could have said something if it was so hard for you. Yes. Never mind. It's fine. I'll just lie here for a bit and everything will be all right. Okay. And get those baskets to Olga Dmitrievana, please. We have something else to do. Yeah, sure. I was ready to agree with anything at that moment, just so I wouldn't have to get up. Slavia put the basket full the baskets full of strawberries next to me and headed to the square, happily chatting with Lena about something. The hardest part is done anyway. That's what I thought before I got up and took the baskets. After the rowing, they felt like cement bags, even while weighing barely more than a few kilograms each. So the trip to the camp leader's cabin took much longer than usual. I had to stop every fifty meters to have a rest. Once I finally made it, I put the baskets on the ground and sat on the deck chair with difficulty. Olga Dmitrievana! Olga Dmitrievana, I've got presents for you! There was no answer. I barely managed to get up and enter the cabin. There was nobody there. If you don't need them, it's up to you. I lay down on the deck chair and fell asleep. I had a weird dream about a strawberry race. <laughs> I was rowing a boat with my last ounces of strength trying to escape huge berries that were chasing me. My hands were failing me and I could barely see anything because of the sweat covering my face. Blood was hammering in my temples, but the strawberries were getting closer. They were baring their teeth at me. But wait, strawberries with teeth? Simon! Simon! I woke up. Olga Dmitrievana was standing beside me, shaking my shoulder. I see you got a rich harvest, didn't you? Thanks to the girl's help. Okay, but that's not all. Seriously, I was just anticipating the lovely rest I was about to have. Do you even know what these strawberries are for? Not a clue. One honest confession. We'll make a cake out of them. I see. Well, that makes sense. To honor the miraculous rescue of Shurik. And it's all thanks to you. It was clear that getting the strawberries wasn't the last thing left to do. And why, please tell me, if I'm such a hero, why do I have to organize a celebration with my name all by myself? Well, I guess. So, I have an important task for you. We are missing yeast, flour, and sugar and knead it all in, in the canteen before dinner. And those who will make the cake can't deal with it on their own somehow? I asked pitifully. Of course they can't. All of them are busy. And you are the only one in the whole camp who does nothing. While her words were partly true, it doesn't make it any easier for me now. Moreover, those words felt like a bullet to my head. So write it down. You'll get yeast in the infirmary, flour in the library, and sugar in the clubhouse. Why? Why are those things there? Wait. Wait up. I have no time. I'm in a hurry. Good luck. She smiled slyly and left. Of course there are a lot of strange things in this camp, but yeast in the infirmary? Okay, I can deal with that, but flour in the library? And sugar? No, it's way beyond my comprehension. I spat on the floor. I don't want to and will not believe this. Tell me, just tell me you're pulling my leg. I would not be surprised if a crowd of fat green trolls would appear here right now beside me, with every one of them feeling obligated to laugh at me. So maybe to hell with this cake. I weighed my options for some time. No, if such a major plan of Olga Dmitrievana's fell through, I'd be in for a world of hurt. And it would complicate both my life in the camp and my search for answers, which I've stopped for quite a while. It seems I have no choice. 
If ever other, if every other place on the cake ingredient list made at least some sense to me, then flour from the library made none. I thought hard about who would put it in the library and why, but I couldn't find any sane explanation after all. Given Zanea's harsh nature, I'd better knock first. Open! Zanea peered at me closely from behind her glasses. What do you want? Um, don't think anything weird, but I need... I didn't want to look like an idiot and decided to explain things carefully. I need some flour. Olga Dmitrievana said that it's here. I understand it, that it sounds strange to keep the flour in the library, but... I was sent to you, and it's needed for a cake to celebrate Shurik's rescue. Yes, I had the flour. What's so strange about it? Zanea replied with surprise. At that second, I felt like I'd been hit on the head with a heavy weight and lost the ability to understand anything at all. Flower in the library. Sure. What's so strange about it? We're in Wonderland. I'm Alice. Now I'm going to eat that magic mushroom and I'll be back home. Hey. Uh, yeah? I was daydreaming. Wait here. I'll be right back. She disappeared behind the bookshelves while I folded my hands and started waiting. A moment later, the sound of a trap door groaning on its hinges reached me. Hey, you need some help? I inquired loudly. I'll deal with it. Zanea barked it out at me. She seems to be in the basement, so I'll have to wait a little. Okie dokie. Who's in the basement? A few minutes passed, but Zanea still hadn't returned. I was, go I was starting to get worried when the door was suddenly flung open and Alyssa came into the library. She looked surprised, too, seeing me here. What are you doing here? Am I not allowed to be here? I said rudely to her. Alyssa was clearly a bit overwhelmed. Ah, what do I care? She snorted and headed to Zanea's table. And why are you here, then? Alyssa measured me with her eyes carefully and almost opened the mouth to say something but then seemed to change her mind and turned away, hiding her hands behind her back. Returning a book? I blurted the first thing off the top of my head. It's none of your business, she replied with a hint of hesitation. What book is it? Alyssa was silent. Oh, come on, let me see it. I wonder what Miss High Voltage Keep Away reads. It's none of your business. Her voice was even less confident. Okay, okay. I don't insist or anything. In fact, I was quite interested to find out what Alyssa was reading. Moreover, I was quite amused to see a book in her hands. TV, movies, or a computer, if one were available here. All these things seem to be much more appropriate entertainment for a girl like her. But she had a book instead. I want to try and snatch it. Because... That's how I am. My curiosity won. I struck at the right moment when Alyssa was looking away from me and snatched the book. Ouch! She screamed. In the following second, her face took on such an expression that it made me question my decision. If I'm about to die, at least I'll know what for. I held a copy of Gone with the Wind in my hands. That was the same book that Lena was reading that evening on the beach. I was so... Oh, bench, 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 not beach. That's a bench. Sorry. I was so astonished that I completely forgot about my imminent death. Is it interesting? Yeah. Alyssa answered without enthusiasm, blushing. Okay, then. I handed the book back to her. Alyssa threw it on the table and left the library quickly without looking at me. So human things aren't alien to her. In the end, she too is a girl. After a quick review of everything that just happened, I concluded that there was actually nothing that strange. Finally, Zanea's deep groan rang out, reaching each and every corner of the library. Grab it! I passed by the bookshelves and be beheld the perspiring librarian sitting near the trap door leading, leading into the basement with a small sack next to her. Well, they might have some sort of storehouse down there. Thanks. I took a sack, the sack and left the library. 
Thank goodness it wasn't too heavy, so I carried it down to Olga Dvitrievana's cabin without too much effort. And I'm going to end it there, guys, because um, I don't want to record for too much longer. So we will pick back up on this next week, and I hope you guys are enjoying the story. I know I am. Um, yeah. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye. I'm logging off now.